Welcome. Parley P. Pratt here. You know, we've been watching you all day. Tasting ginger snaps at Skolda's. Making your own bricks just yonder. Truth is, couldn't be happier to have you here with us. So what have you seen today? Well, you've seen where we lived and how we lived and oh, what happy living it was. You see, when you're here, we're here also because we are in you. Some of what you are now is because of what we are, what we became here in this place, in this beautiful city called Nauvoo. Folks in, folks in, you saints arriving! <laughs> why we came and how we came together <laughs> to build a temple on that bluff yes but the story of Nauvoo did not begin here on this bend of the Mississippi true enough though it began here in our hearts dearest friends sister Emma and I rejoice that you have arrived on your long journey here believe me when I say our hearts leap with joy to see you in Nauvoo we've been praying for you all and hope with all our hearts you will feel welcome in your new home Becky has courage for us both. She heard you people preaching in the market square and came back home on fire. You can stand there and tell me that your God accepts such terrible sacrifices from children that he supposedly loves? Yes, I can. Because I know that he also knows what it means to lose a son. Oh, Robert, I cannot find anywhere. Oh, love. Oh, it's you. <laughs> you must be Sister Laird. Oh, Welcome. You are the prophet. I know you. Though I've never seen you. God bless you for your sacrifices, Sister. George, George so you'll Ford. find that here in Nauvoo, the arrival of every new neighbor was an occasion to open our hearts. The prophet Joseph taught that friendship is one of the grand fundamental principles of everything we are. And here in Nauvoo, we had many opportunities to make new friends. that's just right for how things are today in 1842 but is this how things were in the beginning no no one thought of dancing when we first arrived there was no Nauvoo then it was a wilderness an untamed unlikely settlement of six homes a few log cabins less than a village in human terms but a teeming metropolis of mosquitoes the land was so wet that a man had difficulty walking across it. Right away. Joseph, what are you doing up? We have got to bless these people. But your fever. You were practically delirious last night. And today I am well. You need the Lord would have us heal these people. Brethren, I want you to go now as the disciples of old and bless the sick in the name of Jesus Christ healing them by the power of God through the priesthood you bear. That summer, as we ministered to families all along these banks, healing them, raising them from their sick beds as in days of old, we knew that the miracles of Christ's day had not ceased. The Lord trusts even those who are young. Like Samuel. <laughs> like Joseph Smith. And like you. You did see God, didn't you? Yes. I saw him in open day while praying in a silent grove. I was your very age, George. Will you tell it to us? 
after I had kneeled down and began to offer up the desires of my heart to God, I saw a pillar of light. In our earliest days in Nauvoo, God's power had healed us. And though sickness would continue to plague us, we had been renewed by His strength. Strength we would now need to build a city from a swamp. <laughs> but I have to ask, I mean, what happens to the swamps that don't drain or the plants that don't thrive? I mean, not everything works out, you know. It takes faith to see God's hand, Mr. Laird. Oh, uh, yeah, you make it sound so easy. Ha Suppose that this certain Scott started to take a, a tiny, a wee little interest in what his wife believes, but he doesn't want to get pushed into anything. No, no the answer's simple, really. Oh. <laughs> Realizing that there is no simple answer. When asking his wife, well, that, that would just, just throw open the floodgates and they never get shut again. In coming together to build the temple, we also came together to celebrate the wonder and beauty of life and to express it in the most praiseworthy of ways, in music and drama and dancing. start the temple in the morning. Oh, no. I've never known a layer to be ashamed of his family, Dad. And... Ooh. Well, I am not ashamed. Oh, that's a relief. Thank you. But the Lord has in mind something even better for you. I now turn the key to you in the name of the Lord. And this society shall rejoice. And knowledge and intelligence shall flow down. And crowning it all with the rising walls of the temple. Hasten the work, brethren. And let us finish the temple. The Lord has promised us great blessings. Brother Joseph, want to play stick ball? Why, there's nothing I would like better! Oh, this is so much fun. Day by day, it became obvious that the plan God has for each one of us is a plan of abundant happiness and joy. Only a man with a conscience clear before God could have loved life so well. Ever since his first vision as a 14-year-old boy, he had been misunderstood and persecuted. Emma, don't trouble yourself. Their bounds are set. They cannot pass. Hasn't the Lord promised us? Yes, I know. Thy days are known, and thy years shall not be numbered less. This is the purpose of the temple, to bring together those that dwell on earth with those that dwell in heaven that the hearts of our family members may be bound together for eternity. And now I bid farewell unto my brethren, whom I love, until we shall meet at the judgment seat of Christ. And then shall ye know that I have seen Jesus, and that he hath talked with me face to face. What a beautiful morning. Yes, Hiram. This is the loveliest place 
and the best people under the heavens that they are. Little do they know the trials that await them. As word came of the deaths of Joseph and Hiram, many gathered around me and asked what the Mormons would do now. I told them that we would continue the work that Joseph had restored to all the earth. So let us roll up our sleeves and finish God's house that we may receive his promised blessings. Let us raise this temple unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he may grant us knowledge and power from on high. A year and a half after Joseph's death, we entered the temple rejoicing to make our covenants with God. We could not have known the peace and comfort those covenants would bring. Well, Thank Becky, I had to give away all I have to get back everything I want. And so we walked down Parley Street. We crossed the Mississippi. And with one last glance back at our beloved temple, we turned our wagons west, but nothing could erase what Nauvoo had given us. That we took with us. And we taught our children, and they taught theirs, which is why when you're here, Holy. we're here also. This is the testimony, last of all, which we give of him, that he lives. Amen.